Hey guys, so welcome back to a new reading vlog. So it is currently Wednesday the 30th of September. I felt like vlogging, so I did. I haven't really been in the mood lately, but I feel like vlogging now, but now I'm kind of not in the mood to actually film videos. So I haven't done that in a few days when there should have been two videos up this week, but anyways, I have been concentrating on my blog because I'm participating in Blogtober, which is basically you make a post every day of October. So I've been, you know, scheduling them, getting them up and ready and brainstorming and stuff. So that's been my main concentration recently, but I do want to vlog. So at least you guys will be getting a vlog even if you aren't getting a real, like, normal video. But today we have some mail to unbox. I have one from Book Depository and also the upside down the September Owl Crate. Let's open the Books Depository one first. Ooh, I know what this is. Just looking at the back cover. So we have a Dear Justice. This is the sequel to Dear Martin by Nick Stone, which I read and loved. So I'm super keen for this. I really enjoyed Dear Martin, so interested to see what is gonna go down in this one. So now for Owl Crate, let me just open this. Okay, so let's have there's something rolling around in here which is slightly concerning. That's what we're seeing so far, and I believe that's the blanket on top. There is literally no packaging in here. Like, I don't know, sneak peek. There is no packaging at all because the blanket was just holding everything in. Let me get this out of the plastic because it's really cracked. Okay, so this is so soft. Um, yeah, we knew we were getting a blanket in this month's owl crate because they put that as the sneak peek on the last one, but obviously we didn't know what design it was. So let's pop this out. Let's, let's stand up. Is that up the right way? Yes, it is. You still can't see it all. One moment. There we go. So on this corner here, we have a raven. And then obviously there is like a literal full page of text. And there is another raven on the bottom. I actually really like this. I've never read anything by Edgar Allan Poe, but I like it. And it is just so soft. Like, I mean, so freaking soft. But I think this is one of those blankets that if you wash it, it's just going to wreck it. So we'll have to keep the cats off this one. Okay, so this is the artwork on the spoiler card. And then obviously we have these spoilers on the back. And this month's theme is a glorious haunting. And we have some vampires in the picture. So let's open this item. So it says monsters were unrestrained, unbound, and beautiful in their destruction. Oh my God. Okay, so we have three spoons. Let's just, I'll get one out. One's like dark gunmetal kind of color, one's silver and one's gold. But they have, let's put it there, there we go. They have skulls as the thing, which I don't believe these would be too practical if you were trying to eat soup because the soup would fall through the holes. But they do look cool. I don't think I'll be keeping these because I just won't get any use out of them. And at this point, I'm like, if I don't get use out of it, I don't want it. It's going back in its plastic. We also have a gold one and a silver one. So they can go back in their box. That is a cool item, but like I said, not practical. That'd be like prop type thing. And I don't need any more props right now. Why does this sound like seeds? Oh, it's not. <laughs> it, it's, it's jewelry. Actually, no, it's not jewelry. It's a bookmark, but it legit sounded like seeds. So we have this bookmark, but I'm not quite sure how it works because it's just a tiny bit of chain. Use this bookmark to mark your place in the book you're currently reading by placing the length of the chain between your pages as you would with a normal bookmark. That doesn't look long enough. Hold on, how do we get these off? They're like stuck to this card. So this is what the artwork looks like. This says death before DNF, and then we have a skull, re uh, what's it called? Skeleton reading a book. But I'm just gonna, I don't know if I wanna try and get this off or not. Like that really doesn't look long enough for a book. Look at the length of the chain. How would that fit through a book? And that's not even a big hardcover. That's like a normal size, like the smaller hardcover. I don't quite understand this item. Like the art's pretty, but I don't get it. So next we have, uh, is this a candle? Yes, it's a candle. So this is the Black Flame Candle, Essence of Vanilla and Bourbon, our credit exclusive made by Novelly Yours. So that's what the candle looks like. It's only a little one. It's in a glass jar. All I smell is vanilla. I can't smell bourbon. But yeah, vanilla's good. Everyone loves vanilla, so, you know, people will like that. And it is soy wax. 
doesn't say that on the candle, but you can tell by the discoloration because soy wax discolors when it changes heat, which happens a lot because I live in Australia and it's really hot here, so that happens. Um, then we have a lip balm, which is by Fiction Bath Co. Sleepy Hollow, an Owl Crate exclusive pumpkin spice flavor. I don't know if I want to... I don't like lip balms. I'm sorry, I don't. They put the label over the ingredients. That's great. Um, yeah, vegan lip balm made in Texas. Fiction Bath Co. I don't think I'm going to open this. I'm not going to break the seal because it does actually have a seal on it there. I'm not going to break the seal on this. I don't like pumpkin spice scent and I'm not a fan of... Well, I don't like Sleepy Hollow. I tried reading it. I didn't like it. So this one I'm going to sell on Facebook. I have no use for it. Then we have the pin that goes with the book and then the book in the bottom, which I am trying to get out. Here is the book, which is Horrid by Katrina Leno. This is an Owl Crate exclusive cover. I'm not sure what the original cover looked like in this, but this is definitely creepy. This gives me Wilder Girl vibes, like the cover, because if you know about the book Wilder Girl, basically the plants were like taking over their bodies type thing. I think, I can't remember, it was a long time ago, but I didn't like it either, so you know, I don't have it anymore. But there's a letter from the author on the back, so let's just, it's also a signed edition. Let's just get the booklet. I just wanna see what the other cover looks like. Oh, okay, so the other cover is just black roses. So that's the Owl Creek cover and this is the original cover. Obviously it's just the roses that are a different color. So and then lastly we have this enamel pin which I don't know if it's gonna focus. I might have to take it out of the plastic. One moment. So here is the enamel pin. We have this hand holding a rose which I'm guessing it's based on the book but like the fact that there's a rose on it. But we'll have a look through the spoiler card. So first the flannel blanket was designed by Michelle Gray. I will try and link any artists down below if I can find them or companies, whatever, I'll link them down below. So Michelle Gray designed this flannel blanket. I wouldn't say this was flannel, but I mean, it might be, I, I don't know, but it doesn't feel like flannel. Anyways, featuring the full text of Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven to be a perfect cozy companion to have upon a midnight dreary. Upon a midnight dreary? Is that an Edgar Allan Poe thing and I don't get it? Possibly. So next we have the spoons. Stir some gothic vibes into your cup. Next cuppa with our stainless steel skull spoon set inspired by the bone houses, which is by Emily Lloyd Jones, which is written on the back of this. Nothing screens autumn like surrounding yourself with pumpkin spiced goodness. We can't get enough of this Sleepy Hollow inspired lip balm that Fiction Bath Co created exclusively for this box. Novelly yours whipped up something extra magical in their cauldron with this black flame candle. Light it up and settle in to watch Hocus Pocus for the millionth time. So I'm guessing it's themed around Hocus Pocus. I don't, I haven't watched Hocus Pocus. I'm sorry. Laples and Spells designed this Death Before DNF enamel bookmark that's perfect for marking your place in your seasonal spooky read. DNF equals the acronym used in book reviews that indicates a book that you did not finish. So that just explains that. That's good because that question gets asked a lot on like Facebook groups and stuff. But then we have the book. So it says Autumn TBRs deserve atmospheric haunting reads and with its spine chilling elements, Horrid totally delivers. Set in a dilapidated New England manor house, this contemporary horror story explores themes of mental illness, rage, and grief. Our signed edition features an exclusive cover and author letter from Katrina Leno. Turn your dust jacket to the reverse side to see an exclusive artwork by Renner Illustrations created for our edition. I'll open that in a second because I want to have a look at that. And then we have The Pickety Witch took insp inspiration from Horrid's distinctive rose-filled garden when designing this month's enamel pin. We hope that you love the subtle witchy aesthetics of this piece as much as we do. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Oh, great. So that was everything on the spoiler card. So let's open this up because I want to have a look at the artwork on the reverse. I'm not sure I will be keeping this one just because I'm not really that interested in this book. I'm not sure. I don't like the, the mental illness type horror. It just doesn't appeal to me for some reason. I don't know. I'm trying to get this open. I hate these plastic sleeves. They're so hard to open. And you end up nearly wrecking the book trying to get the bloody things open but anyways um so that's the back of the author letter and it says there was a little girl who had a little curl right in the middle of her forehead and when she was good she was very very good but when she was bad she was horrid a nursery rhyme adapted from the poem there was a little girl by henry wadsworth longfellow interesting and yeah then we have the author letter okay that's the same artwork that's on the back of the book awesome on the back it says jane's fingers were numb was she ready to admit now that she believed in the world was still so hard to say it was silly and childish it was white sheets with eye holes cut out and grainy pictures of disembodied heads and bumps in the night when you're home alone all tucked in bed and frozen with fear there's the signed page let's take 
this dust jacket. Ooh, okay. So firstly, that's what the spine looks like. There's a little bit of roses on there. And this is the reverse of the dust jacket. There is like a cottage, which I'm assuming is like the manor that they talked about in the synopsis. And we've got roses on one side. There's a girl holding, I'm assuming a book. And there's someone in the window upstairs. That's what that looks like up close. Super cool. I'm not sure I'm gonna be keeping this one. I'll keep hold of it for a little while, but I might end up selling it on Facebook. I'll just put the author letter back with it, so I know where it is. And I'll also definitely will be selling the spoons, the lip balm, and the candle. I'm not interested in those. Oh, or the bookmark because I, I don't even understand how that works. And I don't want to rip it off there to find out. I knew this month wasn't quite going to be for me just because I'm not super into like the horror genre. It's just not my thing. So I knew this month wasn't going to be overly successful for my liking, but anyways. So the theme for October box is Legends and Lore and the sneak peek every October box will include a uh, unique and useful item created by fabric designer Janine LaCour. And there are some examples of her work, which are very bright. The only thing I'm actually keeping is the blanket, which I'm keen to use for. I'm pretty sure this is going to get fairly dirty fairly quickly because it is white on the back and also, you know, background is white as well. So that's kind of annoying, but anyways. It would have been better if it was black with right writing because then at least it wouldn't get dirty. That was a long unboxing, but we're done. And we've got Dear Justice as well that came from Book Depository. So, as for currently reading, I'm currently reading two audiobooks. So one of them is a buddy read, which is A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. I'm enjoying it. I don't know how much I'm up to. I don't have that long left. I think there's only about four chapters left, four or five chapters. But I'm enjoying it, but it's not blowing my mind. I love the discussion of, um, like, police brutality and, you know, all that type of stuff that's going on. I'm actually reading two books that feature that right now. We'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, I love that. And I love how that's mixed in with the siren and how the sirens are also feared. And like the same as like the black people are feared. Like it's got that comparison in there, I guess you could call it. But I am enjoying the overall book, but yeah, I'm not sure. And then there's this like kind of, not really a side plot, but part of the plot is like her sister's trying to discover what she is. And like, there's all that going on. So it is interesting, but I'm not absolutely loving it. I'm like, like hugely hooked. The audiobook is really good though. I really enjoy the two narrators because there is two narrators for the two points of view, which I enjoy. But yeah, just not loving the book as much as I thought it was going to. And then the other book I'm listening to on audiobook is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I actually watched the movie a couple days ago and I wanted to go back and reread the book or listen to the audiobook because I wanted to see the comparisons. Like it was a good movie overall. It was a good movie, but just when you compare it to the book, there's a few little things that yeah, I don't know. They just didn't quite add up to me. But anyways, yeah, so that's the two books I'm currently reading. I am going to go and get some more work done on my blog, hopefully, and I've also got to put some stuff up on our website. We have a product release in two weeks, so I've got to, you know, get all the listings set up and everything so they're all ready to go when we release. And yeah, and then I've got to go to work at two. So it's 10.30 now, so not that long away, but it is really cloudy and really cold today. So I highly doubt there are many people coming into the pool. So yeah, we're quite off. I have one thing to show you guys and then I'll come back later. So I bought this plant stand to put in my house when I move because where my plants were before, they were on two barrels that were on the back patio here, but obviously I'm not taking those barrels with me. So I bought this plant stand, but then the barrel is just not in enough sunlight for my succulents. And that's why they were starting to do this. That's why they fan out. They're trying to get to sun. So I decided to move them out here because obviously it's cloudy right now, but they would get sun here from about eight o'clock till about two o'clock. So they'll get like a nice amount of sun. So I moved all my plants out here. Obviously they're not getting too much sun. This is their first day out here, but they're not getting too much sun because it ain't sun out. But anyway, so yeah, I've got all my plants here. I've got a heap of succulents. These are all succulents or, and I have like one cactus. And then I have a few succulents down the bottom, but these are other ones. That's a succulent as well. That one looks really bad at the moment because it's a winter flowering plant. So it's currently dying off, but we've got my snapdragon. There is a dianthus at the back there. There's a gardenia just here who's not flowering yet. There's an oriental pearl at the back that's not flowering yet. And then we've got these two here. So yeah, I've put them all on here. So hopefully they'll get enough sun here and these guys will sort themselves out. I'm also, for a future video, I am doing some succulent propagation. So that's there, you'll see that in the video. And I also planted a mango seed 
Like, out of curiosity, can we focus please? Um, out of curiosity, I planted a mango seed. I need to water him, but you know. I just want to show you guys all my plants and my new plant stand. I didn't put anything on the bottom because I don't trust my dog. And yeah. So, and we also, this TV box sits in this doorway at night so that way she can't get in here. I'm gonna go and do something. I'll talk to you later. Hey guys, Eliza from the future. I'm currently editing this video. Don't mind my hair, I need to go and wash it. But I was literally pissing myself off while editing this part. You can see how dirty my fucking glasses are. Oh my God. So, so <laughs> while I was filming this, I had gotten home from my partners that morning. Well, that lunchtime, basically. I went to work, I was exhausted, and like, I'm annoying myself while listening to myself. So, I'm just gonna quickly show you guys what I got at Big W, which is what I was showing you in this clip, as well as where I was up to in my book, <laughs> because it's annoying me. So, I picked up None Shall Sleep by Elliot Marnie. This is a thriller, as far as I know. Bone chilling, compelling, yes, sounds like a thriller. I've seen this cover everywhere. It looks like old school th horror thriller kind of vibes and, you know, love on the cover. I've been really into thr thrillers and mysteries lately, so I decided to pick this one up. Still haven't read it, but you know, we'll get there. I also picked up The Devil in the Dark Water by Stuart Turton. I read, what was his first book called? Well, not his first one, but what was the other one that I read called? So I read The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton and loved it. It was so freaking good, completely unique. It was so interesting. I was so fascinated by that and it was like mystery. I was into it. But yeah, so I picked up this one. It is massive and I love this cover. It is just stunning. So I picked up this one. These were all from W, so they're all super cheap. I think the most expensive one was this one and it was like 16 bucks. Then I picked up The Left-Handed Booksellers of London by Garth Nix. This just sounds really intriguing. This is on my anticipated releases. It literally says, authorized to kill and sell books. Secret business of magic booksellers tasked with policing the legendary old world, whatever it intrudes on the new world. I'm fascinated. So yes. I got this one as well. As for currently reading at the time, not right now, I was reading Salt of the Sea by Runa Sepetis and I was just over 100 pages through this, loving it. This was a reread for me and so freaking good. So, anyways, that is all. I'm gonna put that one down. So, back to your regularly scheduled programming. So it is Wednesday now and I just went and got the mail and I have some stickers from Redbubble. I can't show you the packaging because there's literally my address on both sides. So I've got some stickers for my bullet journal. Some of these are just generally book related, but I also got some that were related to the Supernatural TV show, uh, the Lucifer TV show, the Aladdin movie and the Mulan movie because I want to do spreads for those in my bullet journal. So I'll just show you quickly. Firstly, we have this cat. Let me get it to focus. Yeah, we have this cat and then, oh, which way? We have this one, this is Supernatural. Obviously this is Baby, Dean, um, Sam and Castiel. Then we have the fallen number plate from Lucifer and Lucifer and 
uh, what is her name? I can only think of the detective. Oh my god, but yeah, them sitting at the piano. Then I got one of Jasmine and one of Aladdin. These are very similar, like, watercolour type... Uh, Aladdin. The genie. Um, these are very similar watercolour type designs. Then I got this Mulan one, which is from the movie specifically, and then this one here, which is just this silhouette with, like, flowers through it. And then I got these two book-related ones. The top one says, A Reader Lives a Thousand Lies Before He Dies, which is a quote by George R. R. Martin. And then the bottom one says, All this reality is really cutting into my reading time. So yeah, they're all for my bullet journal. I also got a box from Pop Culture, and I'm not sure what's actually in this one, because I put in... Actually, I think I know what's in this one, because I'm pretty sure the other stuff I ordered from Zing, not Pop Culture. I bought the Harry Potter A Very Harry Christmas Holiday Pop Bundle. So these ones, none of them, well, so one of them is actually a scene from the movie slash book. The other ones are just like a novelty type thing. So I decided to grab them. We have some little bubbles of air. Interesting. We keep all of this packaging and reuse it for our business because what's the point of spending money buying stuff like this when it's literally a bag of air when I could reuse it and recycle it. So just in case you're curious from all the packaging I get, nearly all of it is reused. So first we have Hagrid with a Christmas tree. I won't open these. I'll just, yeah, yeah you can see what it looks like. Um, these will be staying in the box and I'm not putting them up on my shelves yet. We have Hermione with a Christmas present. That's what it looks like. We have Hermione with a Christmas present. And then we have, oh, wrong side. We have Harry who is holding a little gold ornament that looks like Hedwig. Well, to me, that's what it looks like. I'm assuming that's what it's meant to be, but yeah, it's like a little owl. Then we have Ron who is holding a bonbon or a Christmas cracker, whatever you call them, wherever you're from. This one is hefty. And then we have Albus Dumbledore dressed as Santa, which I love this. This is hilarious. So yeah, they're the Funkos I got. Just want to quickly show you. Now focus on me. Thank you. So I did read some of Salt to the Sea last night and I'm now on page 126. Also, I didn't show you guys these, I don't think. I bought some bookmarks on Facebook. So these are from the company Book Book Owl, which is an Australian bookmark company. Um, I don't know if they do anything else, but I know they do bookmarks. But I got four Harry Potter ones. Someone was selling them on Facebook. So I'll just quickly show you the one that's in my book, which is my favorite because I love this quote. It says, have a biscuit, Potter. I love that. Favorite scene, one of the favorite scenes in the books. Amazing. Um, then we have one that's got Ronald Weasley on it and it's got the flying... It's meant to be a Ford Anglia, but that's a Volkswagen Beetle. Anyways, um, we've got the Howler and then there is like a trunk with a book on top of it on that one. Then we have this one here that says you're a wizard Harry and it's got an owl with books. There is a little ink file there, there's the letter, there's some feathers, and there's a broomstick as well. And then we have another one with an owl on it, and this one is like signs, but it says Magic, Hogwarts, Wizard, Diagon Alley, Ollivanders, Hogsmeade, Quidditch, Hogwarts Express, and then it's got a pumpkin and some books and a broom down the bottom. I just think these are really cute. I really mainly bought these because I wanted that Have a Biscuit Potter one. I love that. It is great. So anyways, yes, I read a little bit of Salt to the Sea. Right now I'm going to do some work on my blog when I talk, while I talk to my partner, and then I gotta go back to this afternoon. So, I'll talk to you guys later, after I do some reading. I'm hoping to read some more Assault to the Sea tonight, but we'll see. Hey guys, so really quickly, because my camera battery is going dead, I just wanted to close out this reading vlog. It has been a little all over the place. It's like, literally, I think, 11 days or something. It's currently the 11th, and I'm pretty sure I started on the last day of September. So, it's been like 11, 12 days or something for this reading vlog, but... It's also been all over the place. I haven't vlogged consistently, but I still wanted to put this together. I debated getting rid of it, but I did unbox my owl crate in this. So I wanted to show that to you guys. But as of finishing out this reading vlog, I did read some more Assault to the Sea and I'm now on page 192. I'm sorry if you just heard air releasing from my dad's truck just then. Um, I'm on page 192 of Salt to the Sea and I'm like basically halfway. So. That is my current reading update. I haven't listened to any more of The Devil in the Dark Water. I just haven't really been feeling it. So I haven't listened to any more of that. But yeah, anyways, I just wanted to close out this reading vlog. And I'll see you in my next one, which will be the graphics a vlogs.